Hey, what's up, guys? It's your host, Tiger Eye Cosplay, and you're watching Nerdosity. What's up, Nerdosity? This is your host, Tiger Eye Cosplay, coming at you. And today, we have a top list of Nerdosity. That's right. What a better way to kick off Friday than with a top list of Nerdosity. And today, we have a top 10 list. And this top 10 list is a top 10 yandere's. Before we get into that though, we gotta go to the rules. You know what's coming, you knew, you knew what was coming. So let's get to that right now. Hey. Now that we're back, without further ado, starting off with number 10 is Breach from Generator X. One of the villains in Generator X is called Breach. She was like this uh, small girl with a freakishly huge arms that could rip open holes in the fabric of reality and send you to other worlds or other places. So it wasn't just teleportation, it was like you could also go into dimensions and stuff. We get an episode fully focused on Breach and what she can do, where she kidnaps Rex and puts him into her own dimension where she has all kinds of shiny things and she loves these things and she would die or kill for these things and she likes Rex saying that she he was his sh her shiny thing and liked her so much that she sent him to the dimension where she keeps all of her good stuff um but then when he started wrecking up her dimension and like started like seriously damaging the things she spit him out because she was just like nah you can't damage my stuff because that's my stuff and I would die for my stuff and if you ain't gonna be a shiny then you can't be here she romantically liked Rex and was super obsessive over him, which is why she sent him to another dimension. But she was also super infatuated and obsessed with her stuff that was there. So yeah, that's why she's a yonder, right? If you come back to Providence, I promise no one will hurt you. And we can be together forever and ever. Now we go on to number nine, which is Shoku Kirishima from Baka to Tess. Shoku Kirishima is head over heels for this guy in class F, the class rep for class F, but she's like super romantically obsessed with this dude that she won't let him look at any other girls, like at all. At one point, I think she like snuck into his house and was just sitting there like reading his magazines or whatever, calling him her love and blah, 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 and that they're gonna get married. But like, she's not violent in the bad way, Island, sort of like she's not gonna kill anyone over this dude, but yes, Shoku, she is a yandere for that reason. <laughs> now we go on to number eight which is Venom from Spider-Man. Venom, the symbiote, came from a, another planet, another dimension or whatever, came in, uh, bonded to Spider-Man, and was just like, this is a perfect dude. And the original com comics and blah, 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 Venom was like, Spider-Man's like the perfect match for me. And so he was like, according to the comics and everything, like super obsessed with Spider-Man. Like to the point where he didn't wanna, he only wanted Spider-Man to deal with him in his suit and do things that Venom wanted him to do. And when Spider-Man tried to do anything else, he would, he was like messing with his brain. He wanted Spider-Man to himself. So when Peter Parker rejected him, threw him away, and he went to Eddie, Eddie Brock was still a very good match, but he was still very much obsessed and very much wanting Spider-Man, which is why they became enemies to the point of like, if I can't have you, then you can't live, sort of thing. And that's why he would be a yandere for this instance. <laughs> Seven, which is Himiko Toga from My Hero Academia. Ooh, now I know that a lot of people are gonna come on to me for putting her at number seven. I'm sorry, guys, but I just haven't seen enough of her in the anime, enough of her interactions to put her at higher parts of the list 
for Yandere's. We kind of get a little bit of Deku, where she's just like, I want to love Deku and like his blood, get his blood and blah, blah, blah. And we kind of see it over Stain because she was like, I want to be like Mr. Stainy and I want to kill Mr. Stainy um, to enact like she's one of the more like crazier ones where you're just like, okay, wait, do you like Stainy? Cause you're Stain, cause you're like saying that you want to kill him. It's just a little hard for me at this current moment to see who she's Yandere for, which is why I'm not putting her higher on the list, but she's definitely a Yandere. I can see that happening. Yes. Guy, you're friends with my hero Stain, right? Cool. Let me join the league. I want to be in your group. <laughs> now we go to number six, which is Hal from Megamind. <laughs> I know you guys were not expecting to see Megamind on this list, but let me tell you, Hal is definitely a Yandere. He just is. And he's Yandere for who? Roxanne Ritchie. He is like so love struck for Roxanne Ritchie, like just obsessive over her, that he like stalks her repeatedly. He wants to kill anybody that gets in his way of her. And when she does not reciprocate the feelings, all because he was like this, the big dude, he went on to a rampage where he just wanted to kill everything and destroy her, destroy Megamind for tainting her mind or whatever. Like he just went off the deep end. All the interactions just screamed like stalkerish, like, oh, Oh, you are a creep, my dude. Like, you need to back the heck up, okay? <laughs> like, he was insane. Because he did get very violent for her. He was ready to kill Megamind to get his love to like him. So yeah, he's definitely a Yandere. This is Metro Tower. They say it's supposed to be a symbol of our city's strength. But for me, it's a reminder of the day this woman ferociously ripped out my heart. And I hate reminders. <laughs> to number five, which is Canon Nakajima from Danganronpa Ultra Despair Girls. Before you come at me being like, yo, I never saw Canon in the game. That's not Canon. And I'm like, yes, it is. Because if you play the whole game, you get to look at Danganronpa. There was like a book or a comic book on the game where you can click through and you can read the occult morons dealings with Toa City when he was there and how he like went through and everything. And then you also see the perspective of Canon. So Canon is like head over heels obsessive over her cousin, Leon Kuwata, which you can remember being the ultimate baseball star in the first game. She realizing that he died because of the future, f or f she thinks because of the future foundation, she um, hated them vehemently and wanted to kill anybody who was like a part of it. So at first when she found the occult moron, she was like, okay, I guess I can deal with this dude for right now. But then when he was like, I'm future foundation, she wanted to strangle him. Like literally, she, her hands were around his throat and she was going to do it because she was like, you killed my love. And like in her notebook as well, like she wrote like Leon Kuwata like over and over again, like Leon Kuwata, Leon Kuwata, Leon Kuwata, Leon Kuwata. That's really creepy and psychotic. You should see someone for that. <laughs> And also that she would uh, stalk him and she wanted to keep other girls from dealing with him. Like you could see, cause she, she wrote about it. She was like, I'd stalk him and then I'd see him with other girls and I hated it so much and I wanted to just take care of those girls. And you're just like, I don't know what you mean by take care of those girls. <laughs> Now we go on to number four, which is Momoka Nishizawa from Sergeant Frog. Now, Momoka Nishizawa is a super rich girl in Sergeant Frog universe that takes care of Tamama, one of the frogs that comes from outer space. Momoka is super yandere over Fuyuki Hinata. She like is super violent when it comes to him, even towards his family with his mother and his sister. Like they're super beautiful, they're well endowed per se, and older as well. So she sees that she has he has all these beautiful girls in his life 
and she's just like, man, I can't compete with that. I gotta take these girls down because they're showing him too much of the world and then he's not gonna be okay with me. They're like talking to him when she's around or like monopolizing him sort of in her mind. She gets super violent. It's very comedic in the anime, but like she gets super violent. She's super yandere over Fiyuki to the point where she will do anything and everything to be his love. Splendid, and what did he think of my invitation to come over and hug? He said no. The young man said he had things to do and stuff. I see. Why does he refuse my love? Fiyuki will be mine whether he likes it or not! That's the third table this week, miss. Something wrong. So now we go to number three, which is Monica from Doki Doki Literature Club. Now Doki Doki Literature Club is a great game. I found it like a year ago because of game theory. I saw it at first and I was like, okay, before I go any farther, I gotta play this game. So I did, and it was freaky, man. I don't recommend it to anyone under 18 because of how triggering it can be, because it deals with suicide and other things to that effect. It's just super heavy and super dark. And Monica is insane. She's yandere for you as the player, because you're playing as a dude and it's like a visual novel sort of thing. So she's technically yandere for the dude that you're playing, but it's still like towards you. And at the end it gets super meta and it's really towards you. She takes out all of the girls in the game by deleting them or killing them in game and then deleting them or making them seem super catatonic that you're just like, I don't want them anymore. So you go for her. So she'll do anything to make you fall in love with her to the point of destroying the whole entire game and making you sit there in silence while she stares at you and you can't do anything else except click through her speaking to you. So yeah, she's super yandere. Like she will destroy a whole world just as be with only you. to number two, which is Ayano from Yandere Simulator. And I don't really know if I really have to explain this, but she's a Yandere since she's the pro she's the main character of the game, Yandere Simulator. I don't think I can get any clearer than that. Like she will kill every single girl that comes her way. Like that's the whole point of the game is to kill these girls in a way that doesn't put suspicion on you so you can get with him eventually, but you wanna make sure that nobody gets close to this dude. <laughs> The number one yandere on this list, she is the queen of yandere's. She is the poster child for it. Without further ado, I bring you number one, which is Yuno Gasai from Future Diary. Everybody and their mother knows of Yuno Gasai. She will do anything and everything to keep Yuki safe from this whole killing game that's happening because of this higher power or whatever. She kills everybody who gets in his way, who's in the game, is like super obsessive over him, follows him everywhere, keeps him very close, won't let him go any other way. If, she, if he starts to get like suspicious of her, she'll be like, yo, you can't be suspicious of me, you gotta love me, that's what you gotta do. She destroyed people who weren't even in the game, where she was just like, oh, they're getting too close to you, so I gotta kill them now. And at one point, she totally kidnapped him and drugged him, kept him like super comatose in, in this room so that he could only be around her and not anybody else. It was rough. <laughs> she killed for him, she killed him multiple times in multiple like dimensions or whatever, just to make sure she, just to, redo her life again to make him fall in love with her because of how yandere she is.
ゆっきーご飯だよ今日はユッキーの好きなビーフシチューだよ<笑>ここにいれば日記所有者に襲われることもないし警察に追われることもない何よりずっと二人でいられるものね And that's it. Thank you so much for listening to the top 10 Yandere's. And we all knew that Yandere's had to come at some point on these top lists of nerdosity. Make sure you tune in every Wednesday and Friday because I bring new videos then. If, you're, if you disagree, if you agree with my list, comment. If you like this video, like it. And also subscribe because, come on, why wouldn't you, right? Thank you all for staying with me. We have finally surpassed a thousand subscribers, and I think that is who is. Insane. It's amazing, right? Thank you so much for watching. You've been watching Nerdosity, and I will see you next time.